Top story. Governor Andrew Cuomo took a quick break from burying old lady-shaped coffins in the Adirondacks to defend himself against sexual assault allegations. But this time, he might have displayed some deeply inappropriate behavior. Politicians take positions for all sorts of reasons, including political expediency and bowing to pressure. But people know the difference between playing politics, bowing to counsel, cancel culture, and the truth. How dare you appropriate our culture of blaming cancel culture? Our cancel culture criticism is not your costume. And if it were, honey, you'd be wearing a J.C. Penney's outlet suit and American flag pin that's permanently drilled into your chest cavity. Or be a guy with a mouth full of Dove beauty bars where your teeth used to be. Or you'd have the glinty little eyes of two bugs that have got inside a human and just decided to eat his organs one by one. Or you'd look like you got your jowl surgically expanded to make room for extra help of roast beef from a hotel convention's carving station. So, all that being said, Senator, if Cuomo is allowed to blame this on cancel culture, how long until dirtbags everywhere start using it as a catch-all excuse and the phrase loses its gravity? Tyler, I'm worried about you guys. Attorney General uh, James is, you know, has launched an investigation, and 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 I trust that uh, you know she is she is more than capable to be able to handle this investigation and to. Uh, the allegations. We need to let our robust and infallible legal system do its job of giving wealthy predators the opportunity to settle out of court and face zero criminal charges. That's right. Now, House Minority Leader and man you swear is deep faked Kevin McCarthy landed at the southern border to sound the alarm that the immigration crisis Republicans didn't solve can now be pinned on someone from the other party. This crisis is created by the presidential policies of this new administration. There's no other way to claim it than a Biden border crisis. When I talk to the doctor to see when they're being tested for COVID, when they get out, more than 10% are testing positive. I mean, that's exactly right. If Biden was serious about COVID, he would stop immigration. Also, he would end abortion since fetuses could become scientists who invent an amazing vaccine. You may not know Steve Jobs' father was a fetus. Exactly. Senator, uh, back us up. No, he's absolutely wrong. For Representative McCarthy to be there on the border when he was nowhere to be found previously uh, just really smacks of hypocrisy at this particular moment. He needs to be back, you know, in D.C. trying to help find the fix instead of having a political stunt. Immigration isn't just a shoehorned COVID issue. McCarthy also said this. I just left a few border agents and I asked them, who are the individuals you're catching? Yeah, they're from Central America. But you know who else? Iran. Yemen. That's right. Immigrants travel here through a tunnel network connected to all our enemies. Yes, this is a thing everyone knows about. And they're pushing so many new immigrants in that Americans are being forced up into Canada, like that coin machine at the arcade. Oh my God. Scary stuff here, everyone. Moving on. Republican-controlled states are introducing voter ID laws to prevent another 9-11 of voter turnout. Meanwhile, in Washington, House Democrats passed the HR1 voting rights bill, which violates Americans inalienable right to disenfranchise Americans. Senator, do we really want some pencil pushers in Washington telling the states how to best disenfranchise their voters? Every American should take pause at the fact that Republican-controlled legislatures across the country are at it again. All of these bills are gravitating through legislatures across the country begs the question that if these people are afraid of people voting. I mean, why are they even running for election in the first place? It lacks courage to suppress the vote. I mean, we need to get rid of the ballot drop boxes. I mean, they're confusing as hell and hard to get in and out of. Using an ID to vote is common sense. Heck, I use my ID when I pay for something with a credit card, which in every way is the exact same activity as voting. The comparisons are ridiculous. You know, having a credit card is not a fundamental right. Yeah. Agree to disagree. Uh-oh, that sound of a dad's fist slam Slamming the dinner table means it's time for our new segment. You don't think we can get mad at this? Wrong! 
Here's how it works. There's a thing you don't think we can get mad at, but then you're wrong, cause we do. Let's start with this. Joe, not my Trump Biden, says that because of expanding vaccine eligibility, Americans will be able to celebrate the 4th of July with backyard cookouts. That makes me mad, somehow, and here's how. Everyone on my block is gonna bang on my door, banging it to the ground to have the traditional Templeton backyard cookout, unaware that during quarantine, I converted my backyard into a half pipe for scooter tricks. Next up, Yo-Yo Ma playing cello during his 15-minute post-vaccine injection observation period. Cello playing encourages a lazy culture of sitting. If Ma doesn't repeatedly clean and jerk that cello, aka the sitter's violin, I don't want to hear that do-nothing trash. Yup, I'm mad at that too. And lastly, sponges. Look at that sponge! It's nuts! Why is it that? Soap smell good, and sponge smells bad? That sucks. You can't grow anything on that green part. It's not grilled grass, it's a liar. And that's how you play. You don't think we can get mad at this? Wrong!